Hello students welcome back to my channel LinkedIn Pharma. Today we have discussed the reproduction in plants, class 7 and chapter 8. Introduction. Reproduction, in general, refers to the biological process by which living organisms generate new individuals of the same species, ensuring the continuation of their species over time. It is a fundamental characteristic of life and is essential for the perpetuation of various species on earth. Reproduction in plants specifically involves the mechanisms through which plants produce offspring or new individuals. Plants have evolved various methods of reproduction. Modes of reproduction Plants exhibit various modes of reproduction, which can be broadly categorized into two main types, vegetative reproduction and reproductive reproduction. Vegetative reproduction Vegetative reproduction in plants involves the formation of new individuals from vegetative parts of the parent plant, such as stems, roots, or leaves. The offspring produced through vegetative reproduction are genetically identical clones of the parent plant. This method is advantageous because it allows plants to propagate rapidly without the need for seeds and sexual reproduction. A. Stem cuttings. In this method, a portion of the stem, with nodes, is cut from the parent plant and then planted in suitable soil. Roots develop from the cutting, and a new plant grows. b. Root cuttings. Here, a section of the root is cut and planted in the soil. Adventitious roots emerge from the cutting, giving rise to a new plant. c. Leaf cuttings. In this method, a leaf, or a part of a leaf, is used to generate a new plant. Some leaves have specialized structures called adventitious buds that can grow into new plants when detached from the parent leaf and planted in soil. d. Runners and stolons. Certain plants produce horizontal stems called runners or stolons that grow along the ground and develop new plantlets at their nodes. Once these plantlets establish roots, they become independent individuals. a. E. Offsets. Some plants, like certain species of succulents, produce offsets or plantlets that develop around the base of the parent plant. These offsets can be separated and grown into new plants. f. Suckers. Suckers are shoots that emerge from the roots of the parent plant. They can be removed and planted to create new individuals. Reproductive reproduction. Reproductive reproduction in plants involves the formation of new individuals through the production of seeds and the involvement of male and female reproductive structures. This type of reproduction can be further categorized into sexual and asexual reproduction, as mentioned in the previous response. 1. Sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction in plants involves the fusion of male and female gametes, reproductive cells, to form a zygote, which develops into a new plant individual. This process usually takes place in flowers, where pollination and fertilization occur. A. Flowers. Flowers are the reproductive structures in angiosperms, flowering plants, where sexual organs are found. They have both male and female reproductive parts. b. Pollination. Pollination is the transfer of pollen from the male reproductive organ, anther, to the female reproductive organ, stigma, of a flower. This can happen through various means, including wind, water, insects, birds, or other animals. c. Fertilization. Once the pollen reaches the stigma, it travels down the style to the ovary, where fertilization occurs. The male gamete, sperm, fuses with the female gamete, egg cell, inside the ovule, forming a zygote. d. Seed formation. After fertilization, the ovule develops into a seed, containing the embryonic plant, surrounded by a protective seed coat. a. Seed dispersal. The mature seed is eventually released from the parent plant and dispersed through various agents like wind, water, or animals. 2. Asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction in plants includes methods such as apomixis and parthenogenesis, where seeds or offspring are produced without fertilization, resulting in genetically identical clones of the parent plant. A. E. Vegetative propagation. This method involves the growth and development of new plants from vegetative parts of the parent plant, such as stems, roots, or leaves. Common examples include runners, e.g., strawberry plants, bulbs, e.g., onions, and rhizomes, e.g., ginger. b. Apomixis. 
Some plants can produce seeds without fertilization through a process called apomixis. In apomictic reproduction, the seeds are genetically identical to the parent plant. Both sexual and asexual reproduction play crucial roles in the life cycle and propagation of plants, ensuring their survival and adaptation to changing environments. Plants have evolved these different modes of reproduction as adaptive strategies, enabling them to propagate effectively in various environmental conditions and ensuring the continuation of their species. Budding Budding is a form of asexual reproduction commonly observed in many organisms, including some plants and a wide range of animals. It involves the development of a new individual, bud, as an outgrowth or bulge on the body of the parent organism. The bud eventually separates from the parent and grows into a genetically identical individual, often referred to as a daughter or offspring. In plants, budding is not as common as other forms of asexual reproduction, but some species do reproduce through this method. One example of budding in plants is seen in yeast, a type of fungus. Yeast cells can reproduce asexually by forming small buds that pinch off from the parent cell, resulting in two genetically identical yeast cells. In animals, budding is observed in various species, including certain cnidarians, e.g., corals, jellyfish, hydra, some flatworms, and certain tunicates. Each of these organisms has specific mechanisms and patterns of budding that contribute to their reproductive strategies. In cnidarians, such as corals and jellyfish, the process of budding involves the growth of a bud on the body of the parent polyp. The bud gradually develops into a new polyp and eventually detaches to become an independent individual. In flatworms, budding occurs in species like planaria. The process involves the development of a bud on the side of the parent worm's body, which grows and separates, forming a new flatworm. In tunicates, sea squirts, budding is also a common method of asexual reproduction. Tunicates produce buds that develop into new individuals, often forming colonies of genetically identical members. Budding is advantageous in certain environments and conditions where the parent organism can produce offspring quickly without the need for complex reproductive structures or the involvement of gametes. However, since budding produces genetically identical offspring, it may limit genetic diversity within a population, which can have implications for the adaptability and resilience of the species in changing environments. Fragmentation Fragmentation is another form of asexual reproduction observed in various organisms, including some plants and certain types of animals. It involves the breaking or fragmentation of the parent organism into smaller pieces, each of which can grow and develop into a new individual. In plants, fragmentation can occur when a part of the plant, such as a stem, rhizome, or root, breaks off from the parent plant and establishes itself as a separate entity. Each fragment contains enough genetic information and nutrients to develop into a complete and independent plant. This method of reproduction is commonly seen in some ferns, mosses, and other types of plants with specific vegetative structures that readily separate from the parent. For example, consider a plant with a creeping stem, rhizome, that grows along the ground. If a segment of this rhizome breaks off due to environmental factors or human disturbance, it can take root and start growing independently as a new plant. The process of fragmentation allows the plant to spread and colonize new areas efficiently. In some animals, fragmentation is also a viable mode of reproduction. For instance, certain species of starfish are capable of regenerating lost body parts. If a starfish loses an arm, that arm has the potential to grow into a whole new starfish. Similarly, some species of flatworms can undergo fragmentation, where a single flatworm breaks into multiple pieces, and each piece can regenerate the missing body parts, ultimately forming complete individuals. Fragmentation is advantageous in environments where the parent organism experiences physical stress or damage that results in the breaking apart of its body. By producing new individuals through fragmentation, organisms can take advantage of available resources and expand their population rapidly. However, like other forms of asexual reproduction, fragmentation can lead to reduced genetic diversity within a population, 
which may have implications for their adaptability to changing conditions and potential vulnerability to diseases or environmental challenges. Spore formation Spore formation is a method of reproduction commonly observed in various groups of organisms, including certain plants, fungi, algae, and some protozoa. Spores are specialized reproductive cells that are capable of developing into new individuals under suitable conditions. This mode of reproduction is essential for the survival and dispersal of these organisms, particularly in challenging or unfavorable environments. Here's how spore formation generally occurs in different groups of organisms. Fungi. Fungi are well known for their spore forming abilities. They produce microscopic spores as part of their reproductive life cycle. Fungal spores are usually located in reproductive structures, such as spore-bearing structures called sporangia or fruiting bodies like mushrooms. When environmental conditions become favorable, these spores are released and dispersed by various means, such as wind, water, or animals. If a spore lands in a suitable environment with sufficient nutrients and moisture, it can germinate and grow into a new fungal individual. Plants some groups of plants, such as ferns and mosses, reproduce through spore formation as part of their life cycle. These plants have specialized structures, called sporangia, that produce and release spores. The spores are usually produced on the undersides of leaves or within spore capsules, sporangia, on the plant. When mature, the spores are released and can be carried by air currents. If they land in a suitable environment, they can develop into a new plant, going through a specific life cycle involving alternation of generations. Algae Certain types of algae, such as diatoms and some green algae, also reproduce through spore formation. Diatoms, for example, produce spores called oxospores, which allow them to restore their original size after cell division. Other algae produce various types of spores that contribute to their dispersal and survival. Protozoa Some protozoa, like the water mold Phytophthora infestans, produce spores during their life cycle. These spores play a crucial role in the spread of diseases and infections in certain organisms. Spore formation is advantageous for these organisms. Because spores are protected by tough outer coverings, which can withstand adverse environmental conditions like extreme temperatures, drought, and harsh chemicals. This protective layer allows spores to remain dormant until conditions become favorable for germination and growth. The ability of spores to disperse over long distances also aids in the colonization of new habitats and the perpetuation of species. Sexual Reproduction Sexual reproduction is a mode of reproduction in which offspring are produced by the fusion of male and female gametes, reproductive cells. It is a common method of reproduction in many plants and animals. In the context of plants, sexual reproduction typically involves the following key structures and processes. Stamens Stamens are the male reproductive organs found in the flowers of angiosperms, flowering plants. Each stamen typically consists of a slender stalk called the filament, with an enlarged structure at the top called the anther. The anther is responsible for producing and releasing pollen, which contains the male gametes or sperm cells. Pistil, carpal. The pistil, also known as the carpal, is the female reproductive organ in the flowers of angiosperms. It is typically located at the center of the flower. The pistil consists of several parts. Stigma. The stigma is the sticky, receptive tip of the pistil, where pollen grains land and adhere during pollination. Style The style is a slender tube-like structure that connects the stigma to the ovary. Ovary The ovary is the enlarged base of the pistil, containing one or more ovules. The ovules are the structures that house the female gametes or egg cells. Male gametes, sperm cells Male gametes, also known as sperm cells, are produced within the anthers of the stamens. Pollen grains contain the male gametes and are released from the anther. Female gamete, egg cell. Female gametes, also known as egg cells or ovum, are produced within the ovules found in the ovary of the pistil. Fertilization in zygote. Fertilization is the process in which the male and female gametes fuse to form a zygote. During pollination, pollen from the anther lands on the stigma of the pistil. The pollen grain then produces a pollen tube, 
which grows down the style and reaches the ovary. Inside the ovule, one of the sperm cells fuses with the egg cell, forming a zygote. Seed formation. The zygote develops into an embryo, which is the young plant to be. The ovule, now fertilized, becomes a seed. The seed contains the embryonic plant, stored food reserves, and a protective seed coat. Fruit formation. In many flowering plants, the ovary enlarges and ripens to become a fruit. The fruit helps in seed dispersal, allowing the seeds to be transported away from the parent plant and potentially germinate in new locations. Sexual reproduction in plants ensures genetic diversity and promotes adaptation to changing environmental conditions. It involves the intricate coordination of male and female reproductive structures to facilitate the transfer of genetic material and the development of new individuals. Unisexual flowers and bisexual flowers Unisexual flowers and bisexual flowers are two types of flowers based on their reproductive structures and functionality. These terms are used to describe the presence and arrangement of male and female reproductive organs within a flower. Unisexual flowers, monoecious and dioecious. Unisexual flowers are flowers that contain either male reproductive organs, stamens, or female reproductive organs, pistils, but not both. In other words, a unisexual flower is either functionally male or functionally female. Monoecious plants. In some species, monoecious plants have separate male and female flowers on the same individual plant. This means that one plant produces both male flowers and female flowers. Examples of monoecious plants include corn, maize, and certain types of squash. Dioecious plants. In dioecious plants, individual plants produce either male flowers or female flowers, but not both. This means that one plant is either entirely male or entirely female. Examples of dioecious plants include certain species of holy and willows. Bisexual flowers, hermaphroditic or perfect flowers. Bisexual flowers, also known as hermaphroditic or perfect flowers, contain both male and female reproductive organs within the same flower. These flowers are capable of self-pollination, where pollen from the anthers can reach and fertilize the stigma of the same flower. Alternatively, they can be cross-pollinated, where pollen is transferred between flowers of the same species. Most of the familiar and common flowers we see, such as roses, lilies, and sunflowers, are bisexual flowers. In both unisexual and bisexual flowers, pollination is a crucial step in sexual reproduction. Pollination involves the transfer of pollen from the male reproductive structures, anthers, to the female reproductive structures, stigma. After successful pollination and fertilization, the flower can develop into fruit-containing seeds, which are the result of sexual reproduction and will give rise to new plants. The distinction between unisexual and bisexual flowers plays a significant role in the reproductive strategies and ecological interactions of different plant species. Some species rely on wind, insects, birds, or other agents to transfer pollen between flowers, while others can self-pollinate if they have bisexual flowers on the same plant. These diverse reproductive strategies contribute to the overall success and survival of various plant species in their respective environments. Pollination Pollination is a crucial biological process in the sexual reproduction of flowering plants and geosperms. It involves the transfer of pollen grains from the male reproductive structures, anthers, of a flower to the female reproductive structures, stigma of the same or a different flower. This transfer of pollen is essential for fertilization, leading to the formation of seeds and the development of new plant individuals. Pollination can occur through various mechanisms and agents, including insect pollination. Many flowers have evolved to attract insects like bees, butterflies, moths, and flies, which inadvertently carry pollen between flowers as they move from one flower to another in search of nectar or pollen as food sources. The flowers often have bright colors, pleasant scents, and nectar guides to entice the insects. Bird pollination Certain flowers, like those of hummingbirds, are specially adapted to attract birds. These flowers are typically brightly colored, tubular in shape, and produce large quantities of nectar, which appeals to birds. Wind pollination. In some plants, pollen is released into the air and carried by the wind to reach the stigma of nearby flowers.
These flowers are usually small, lack colorful petals and nectar, and produce large quantities of lightweight, powdery pollen. Water pollination Some aquatic plants rely on water to transport their pollen from male to female flowers. The pollen floats on the water surface and reaches the stigma of submerged female flowers. Self pollination In certain plants, self pollination occurs when the pollen from the anther lands on the stigma of the same flower or another flower on the same plant. This can happen due to close proximity or mechanisms that promote self pollination, such as flowers with both male and female reproductive organs. Successful pollination leads to the germination of the pollen grain on the stigma, forming a pollen tube that grows down into the ovary. The male gametes, sperm cells, then travel through the pollen tube to reach the ovule, where they fertilize the female gamete egg cell. This fertilization results in the formation of a zygote, which develops into an embryo within the seed. The ovary then develops into a fruit, which protects the seeds and aids in their dispersal. Pollination is not only vital for the reproduction and survival of individual plant species but also plays a crucial role in the ecosystem by supporting biodiversity, providing food sources for various animals, and contributing to the balance of ecological relationships. Fertilization Fertilization is a key step in the process of sexual reproduction, where male and female gametes, reproductive cells, fuse to form a new individual with a unique combination of genetic material. In plants, animals, and many other organisms, fertilization leads to the formation of a zygote, which subsequently develops into an embryo. Here is a breakdown of the process of fertilization and its important stages. Fusion of gametes Fertilization begins with the fusion of male and female gametes. In plants, the male gametes are contained within pollen grains located on the anthers of the stamen, while the female gametes are present in the ovules within the ovary of the pistil. During pollination, pollen from the anthers is transferred to the stigma of the pistil. From there, the pollen grain germinates and produces a pollen tube that grows down through the style and reaches the ovary. The male gametes then travel through this pollen tube to reach the ovules. Formation of Zygote Once the pollen reaches the ovules, one of the male gametes fuses with the female gamete, egg cell or ovum inside the ovule. This fusion of the gametes results in the formation of a single diploid cell called a zygote. The zygote contains a complete set of chromosomes, one set from each parent, and represents the first stage of the new individual's development. Development of the embryo. The zygote, which now contains the genetic material from both parents, undergoes cell division and starts developing into an embryo. The embryo is the early stage of the new plant or animal and will eventually grow into a mature individual under favorable conditions. In plants, the embryo is part of the seed, which also includes stored food reserves and a protective seed coat. In animals, the embryo continues to grow and develop within the mother's womb or in an egg, depending on the species. As the embryo develops, it goes through various stages of growth and differentiation until it becomes a fully formed organism ready to be born or hatched. Fertilization is a critical event in the life cycle of sexually reproducing organisms, as it ensures genetic diversity in the continuation of the species. The unique combination of genetic material resulting from fertilization contributes to the adaptability and evolution of different species, allowing them to thrive in diverse environments. Fruits and seed formation. Fruits and seed formation are closely linked processes that occur after successful fertilization in flowering plants and geosperms. Fruits are the matured ovaries of flowers, and they develop from the ovary after fertilization. Seed formation occurs within the ovule, a structure found inside the ovary, and is initiated by the fusion of male and female gametes during fertilization. Here is a step-by-step -step explanation of fruits and seed formation in flowering plants. Fertilization As mentioned earlier, fertilization occurs when the male gamete, sperm cell, fuses with the female gamete, egg cell, inside the ovule. This fusion results in the formation of a zygote, which will develop into an embryo. Ovary development After fertilization, the ovary, which is part of the pistil, female reproductive organ, starts to develop into a fruit. 
The ovary undergoes changes and enlarges to accommodate the developing seeds. Seed Development Inside the ovule, the zygote formed during fertilization begins to divide and differentiate, eventually forming an embryo. The embryo is the young plant to be and contains the genetic material from both the male and female parents. Alongside the embryo, the ovule also contains stored food reserves to nourish the developing embryo. Maturation of the fruit As the seeds inside the ovule continue to develop, the ovary surrounding them also undergoes changes. The ovary wall thickens and develops into the fruit, which protects and helps in the dispersal of the seeds. The fruit can take on various shapes, sizes, and textures depending on the plant species. Seed Dispersal When the seeds are fully developed and the fruit is mature, the fruit undergoes various mechanisms to disperse the seeds away from the parent plant. Seed dispersal can happen through wind, water, animals, by ingestion and excretion, or mechanical means, e.g., bursting of the fruit. Germination if the dispersed seeds land in a suitable environment with the right conditions, such as proper moisture, light, and temperature, they can germinate. Germination is the process where the seed begins to grow and develop into a new plant. The stored food reserves in the seed provide the initial nourishment for the germinating embryo until it can establish its roots and start photosynthesizing. Fruits and seed formation are critical stages in the life cycle of flowering plants. The production of fruits and seeds allows plants to disperse their offspring to new locations, increasing their chances of survival and colonization. Additionally, seeds serve as a means of survival during unfavorable conditions until the conditions become suitable for germination and growth. Seed Dispersal Seed dispersal is the process by which matured seeds are transported away from the parent plant to new locations, facilitating the establishment and survival of new plant individuals. This mechanism is essential for the reproduction and distribution of many plant species, ensuring their genetic diversity in the colonization of diverse habitats. Various agents and mechanisms are involved in seed dispersal, including wind dispersal, anamokery, seeds of many plants, especially those with lightweight structures or wing-like appendages, are adapted for wind dispersal. As the wind blows, it carries these seeds away from the parent plant, allowing them to cover considerable distances. Examples of wind-dispersed seeds include those of dandelions and maples, samara seeds. Animal Dispersal, Zuchori Many plants have evolved strategies to attract animals that help disperse their seeds. Animals may be attracted to the fruit, which contains seeds, as a food source. After consuming the fruit, the seeds pass through the animal's digestive system unharmed and are later excreted in different locations, often with nutrient-rich fertilizer. Birds, mammals, and even ants play crucial roles in the zuchori of seeds. Water Dispersal hydrocary. Seeds that can float or have buoyant structures are dispersed by water. These seeds are released into water bodies, such as rivers, streams, or ponds, and can be carried downstream to new areas. Aquatic plants and those growing near water bodies often use hydrocury as their primary means of dispersal. Explosive Dispersal Ballistocary Some plants have fruits or seed pods that are designed to explode when they ripen, forcefully ejecting the seeds. The explosive action propels the seeds away from the parent plant, increasing their dispersal range. Examples of plants using ballistocary include touch me knots, mimosa pudica, and juaweeds, impatience. Self dispersal, autocary. In some plants, seeds are dispersed mechanically, without the need for external agents. For example, the fruits of certain plants may have structures that twist or spring open, releasing the seeds directly. Seed dispersal is advantageous for plants because it reduces competition among offspring and enables the colonization of new habitats. Dispersal also helps plants avoid overcrowding and decreases the likelihood of disease transmission between closely related plants. The diverse mechanisms of seed dispersal demonstrate the remarkable adaptability in evolutionary strategies employed by plants to ensure their survival and perpetuation in various environments. Thank you for watching please like and subscribe to my channel LinkedIn Pharma.